So, welcome back. So, we have seen in the previous class the definition of the thermal reservoir, how it is quantified and I also wrote the canonical partition function with the respect to beta and we now know beta is equal to the reciprocal of k times temperature. In today's class what we will do, we will try to find out some more properties based on the monoatomic gas. Like we continue from the previous lecture where we found entropy, now we proceed and find out other thermodynamic properties such as internal energy, enthalpy, specific heats, etc. So, today's class will focus on the thermodynamic properties of monoatomic gas. So, what I will cover here is the thermodynamic properties of ideal monoatomic gas. Obviously, it needs not to be mentioned. If it is a monoatomic gas, it will be ideal because all the atoms are not interacting with each other. Then uh, we will also talk about, till now we have talked about the translational partition function and we have also found out what are the translational function if there are different energy modes. So, if it is translational rotational, you just have to do the product of them. So, now we will focus on the translational function or the translational partition function leaving aside, we will focus on the electronic and nuclear partition function. So, there are other partition functions also which I am not covering, for example, like vibrational and rotational because this will come into existence only when there is a bond formation. But there, since there is no bond formation in a monoatomic gas, we will focus our attention on the electronic and nuclear partition function. So, we start with the Helmholtz energy. So, we are continuing with the previous lecture, we have got the definition for entropy, for pressure. Now, with those definitions, how we can find out the expression for other properties? Let us suppose you know Helmholtz energy, you are very well aware, you have taught, it has been taught in your undergraduate class, Helmholtz energy, you know, it is a, it is a function of your internal energy, temperature, entropy and you know how they are related to each other. So, from there we try to find out if there is a connection. So, does statistical thermodynamics provide any like uh, direction of how to compute this Helmholtz energy from partition function? So, we try to do that. So, A we know since we are talking about Helmholtz fun function, so it is A and we know this A is a function of the number of moles, the constraint volume and the temperature. And we also know this is the Helmholtz energy and it is equal to U minus T into S. So, internal energy minus product of temperature into entropy. Okay. So, it means from this definition, can we replace the value of internal energy? We will replace it using our previous known description of internal energy. I will not write out here. You can refer to my earlier lecture. So, I will write U in terms of partition function. If I write that, you will get Kt square into do ln Q by dou t keeping your volume and n as constraint minus t into s. Now, minus t into s, the entropy s I will take up again from the previous lecture expression. The expression was k into ln q then plus t square. So, you have t square here. So, it is multiplied by t. So, k t into dou ln q by dou t k t into dou ln q by dou t into v by n. Now, you open the bracket. Okay. Well, this is uh, this bracket is second bracket. So, okay. so, if I write down the entire expression k t square into dou ln q by dou t v by n minus k t ln q minus k t square dou ln q by dou t by v by n. So, if you see, if you open up the bracket, these two cancels out, these two term cancels out. So, what we have is simply A equals to k t ln q. So, this is the very simplest definition for Helmholtz free energy, it is k t. So, if you know the partition function, you take the logarithmic of that, multiply by k t, you get the Helmholtz free function. So, this is an important conclusion. So, we have found out expression for pressure, we have found out expression for entropy, now we have found out expression for Helmholtz energy. Okay. Likewise, if we have particles of different species, let us say if we have mixture of particles, 
if we have mixture of particles of different species different species. So, we can also write down what is the expression of that. So, we know this expression from your dou n i dou n i keeping temperature. So, if you take partial derivative of Helmholtz free function with respect to number of moles or molecules with respect to the ith number of molecules of i keeping all other molecules to be constant. So, this constraining such that j is not equal to i. So, if you have number of molecules, three different molecules with different numbers. So, you have to keep the particular number that is ith number of molecules as constant. Where you are doing the derivative with respect to i number of moles keeping the other moles as constant. This is equal to we know dou g by dou n i t p j is not equal to i. So, now we have made a inter a relation between Helmholtz free function and Gibbs energy. So, and this is you know it is nothing but. So, if you replace a with k t l n q in this expression that is in the left hand side you replace a with this expression k t l n q. So, you will get nothing but minus k t will be as it is it will be outside minus k t. Yeah, so I forgot one negative sign here because if you see if you notice carefully when they cancel out the first and third term when cancels out you have a negative term here. So, it is a is equal to minus k t l n q. So, this expression if I call this as expression 1. So, if you substitute this expression in expression let us say this is the L h s then it will be minus k t you take the derivative with respect to number of moles of i th component minus k t dou l n q by dou n i at constant temperature pressure and number of moles where n j is not equal to i. So, then this is very much familiar with chemical engineers you know this k t l o l n q by dou n i is nothing but the chemical potential of that particular component mu i. So, this is what we called as chemical potential. Okay. So, it means what we did we found out an expression for Helmholtz free function which is minus k t l n q. Then we took out this from definition we know the partial derivative of the Helmholtz free function can be related to partial derivative of Gibbs energy with respect to number of moles. So, from temperature and volume we move to temperature and pressure and we found out an expression for chemical potential. So, now we, what do we have? We have again another expression for chemical potential. So, along with Helmholtz free function, entropy, pressure we also have an expression for chemical potential. So, now let us see for enthalpy and heat capacity it is very easy because once you know u, once you know p you can find out h because h is nothing but the addition of the inter energy and the pressure volume work. So, this will become you write out the expressions it is k t square then dou l n q by dou t and you have the constraining property that is volume and number of molecules plus now you can recollect what expression we got for pressure from the previous lecture you substitute that and multiply by v. So, if you do that you will get plus k t v k t capital V is the volume and then you will have a derivative with respect to volume dou l n q by volume and keeping the temperature and n as constraint. Now, this is the expression for H. So, you can see so everything is fixed. So, if you want to know the enthalpy you just need to know the partition function because V is constraint because V means you are taking the volume of the particle in a box or the assembly of atoms in a box which is fixed. So, let us say it is 1 meter cube or 1 centimeter cube. So, now you can also find out C V. What is C V? C V is the derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature 
at constant volume. So if you take up this expression that is kt square dou ln q by dou 2 and you do a derivative with respect to temperature you will get 2 kt 2 kt dou ln q by dou t is just I am doing a derivative of the first term basically nothing else v by n then plus kt square dou square ln q by dou t square. So this is the expression for Cv. Then uh, you can also find out or you can simplify this expression. So if you can simplify this expression, you can also write it in this manner also another way of writing it that is 2 kt by q. plus kt square by q o square q by dou t then with respect to v by n and then you put uh, this additional term I will explain what is it it is just I want to get rid of this logarithmic terms okay I want to get rid of this logarithmic term in the previous expression so I am writing here is I am dividing by q so it will become only derivative of q same thing here also I am writing in terms of q since there is a logarithmic term also and the square term also it becomes a uh, two terms then actually differentiating two terms two different terms one is kt square by q into do dou q by dou t so that I am differentiating so if you do that term differentiating you get two terms so this is the those two terms so here it is because it is easier to get a derivative of this sometimes q if you want to write with respect to t rather than logarithmic term then cp can also be found out from a similar expression I will use one expression in used in classical thermodynamics which is you know I will not derive it here cv minus t into dou v by dou p at t and dou p by dou t whole square at v okay now we do not have any expansion for v because v is constant what you can do is you can just inverse this so you can write in this manner c v minus t into let the term dou p by dou t whole square be as it is with respect to volume and in this instead of dou v by dou p you can write down dou p by dou v with respect to constant temperature okay so this way you can also get an expression for cp so constant heat specific heat capacity at constant pressure as well as constant volume both you can obtain just if you know the partition function because you know dou p by dou t you can easily calculate you know the expression of p p is nothing but kt into dou ln q by dou v so you can take a derivative of that with temperature you get this term numerator denominator of the same way you take the derivative of this kt into dou ln by dou v with respect to v you get dou p upon dou v that is the denominator term and you can then obtain cp because cv we have already calculated so you can obtain cp so we have obtained h the enthalpy then the specific heat capacities at constant volume and constant pressure respectively now let us come back to our ideal monoatomic gas so now we are becoming specific so we are trying to from here on we will try to focus on type of molecule whether it is monoatomic diatomic polyatomic or liquid state from now on we will try to grasp so whatever we have discussed in the previous slides it is not like that it is only applicable for monoatomic gas let me make it very clear it is applicable to all types of systems only the difference is your partition function will change for ideal monoatomic gas if you read carefully here what I have written is to develop an explicit expression is not that easy because atom if you want to write now, right now we were discussing about particles so now for an atom because atom is not a point mass we have, we have considered all these examples based on a point mass a particle which is inside a box and then we have obtained the partition function but atom is not a particle or a point in a box because it possesses complicated electronic and nuclear structure you must be aware because of your plus 2 
you know the structure of the atoms, how the electrons revolve around the nucleus. So, it means there are numerous energy states associated with the internal degrees of freedom. Now, what internal degrees of freedom I am talking about? I am talking about the let us say in the case of monoatomic gases, it has electronic states, it can have terrific various electronic states where the total energy can be possible or it can also have lot of translational states. Okay. Then it can also have nuclear states because of the spin of the atoms. So, like uh, the question then becomes how does these energy modes like nuclear energy, electronic energy, nuclear energy and translational energy modes, the internal energy modes affect the partition function thermodynamic properties of an ideal question. So, we are questioning ourselves that how can we see the effect of these different modes on an actual monoatomic gases. Previously, what we did on a particle or atom, we did not focus on these different translational, rotational, vibrational or these nuclear or electronic modes. So, it means the first idea which comes to the mind or the first assumption is the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. So, Born means this is Max Born. So, you must be knowing this Max Born, he was the supervisor of this, uh, I will come to that name later. So, Max Born got this Nobel Prize for Physics in 1954. What he proposed was that the translational energy states are independent of the electronic and nuclear energy states. So, this was together with Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, you know, in this particular year, you have a, a movie also released after him, as R. W. Oppenheimer, which is currently into 2023. So, along with his Bond, Max Born was a supervisor, they proposed this important outcomes of statistical mechanics that is the translational energy states are independent of the electronic and nuclear energy states. It means, so translational means the motion of the electrons. So, the motion of the electrons or the entire nuclei is independent of each other. So, we have independent electronic energy states and we have independent nuclear energy states. It is not that they are dependent on each other. So, that what they said both Born and Oppenheimer what they said was that you can treat the wave function, you can treat the wave function of an electronic state and a nuclear state separately. So, the movement of a nuclear state means I am talking about the movement of the nuclei and electronic state means I am talking about the movement of electrons. So, both these motion are decoupled, they are independent. So, their wave function are also decoupled. So, they can be treated likewise. So, this makes the calculation much more simpler in quantum chemistry or quantum mechanics. So, that is what their approximation was all about. So, electronic, you just remember the electronic and nuclear energy states of an atom may be considered to be independent. Okay. So, that was an important outcome and on this basis actually the entire quantum chemistry is based on. So, this is called the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. So, it means if they are independent, if this translational and electronic and nuclear, they are independent of each other, can we write the partition function of a single atom? We can. Now, the total energy then becomes, the total energy then becomes E translational plus E, then you have the electronic E nuclear. So, translational mode, electronic mode, nuclear mode. Okay? So, you know what is translational by now, you know what is electronic by now, you know what is nuclear by now. So, it means I can also write their comparative partition function. So, if you say Q, small q I am writing for a single atom. So, it is just the states of atom across all the states of atom. So, it is e to the power of minus e trans plus E electronic plus E nuclear total energy by K T that is what it says. Okay. So, they are separable. So, if they are separable means I can write this way Q is equal to Q of trans Q of electronic and Q of nuclear okay. because if I separate this exponential term they take the form like manner. So, it means the translational mode I can write down Q trans is equal to summation across all translational states.
all the translation states i so it will be e to the power of minus e to the power of translational into i by kt then q electronic will be likewise similarly defined as now instead of translation states it will be electronic states i so it will be e to the power of minus e of electronic into i by kt and then you will also have the finally the nuclear states the nuclear states will be summation of all nuclear states j so that's what the born oppenheimer suggestions or the, the approximation says you can separate out the partition function of individual atoms so this is translational electronic and nuclear are separated out so it means the motion of the nucleus and the electrons are can be separated so that's what the wave function is become simpler to solve so for translational we have already found out that expression from the previous lecture what was that q translational we found out it was 2 pi m by beta h square by 3 by 2 particle in a box similar expression we have for a atom in a box so where beta now we have no what is beta is 1 by kt if i want to write down in terms of 1 by kt it will become 2 pi m kt 2 pi m kt into h square by 3 by 2 into v so this is a translational partition function we already have known and we have already defined similar like particle in a box so from here what they did they can found out or they can you can also replace it with the de broglie's wavelength what is this de broglie's wavelength it is a wavelength equivalent of the momentum of a particle in a wave particle duality theory of matter so what is the wavelength associated with the mass of the particle that's what it says so the mass of the particle can be converted to its unique wavelength so because this is converting mass to wavelength wave property so that is called the wave particle duality theory of matter so for this there was another physicist de broglie who got the nobel prize for this in physics in 1929 okay so this de broglie wavelength takes up this expression so if i want to write in terms of de broglie's wavelength so I will have to write Q translational is volume, only volume and this remaining is cubed. So this is the de Broglie's wavelength which is h square by 2 pi m k t. So this is what it is called the de Broglie wavelength. So here mass, mass of the particle, so you are relating mass of the particle with the a wave function. So mass of the particle means if I talk about hydrogen, do not take one, it has to be in atomic mass unit. So you should know the conversion between uh, atomic mass unit and gram. Ah, okay, and K you know, T is the temperature, K Boltzmann constant, H Planck's constant. So you substitute anything, all these values, it will be the de Broglie's wavelength for example if we are going to take a mass of any matter let's say our mass then also you have to convert it into atomic mass units so moving ahead now let us see how the translational mode and translational partition function we have already obtained now moving ahead let us go and see the electronic energy or the electronic partition function so electronic partition function cannot be evaluated so easily like translational because electronic energy states depends on the electronic structure of the atoms which is specific to atomic species so you may have metals you may have non metals all have different atomic number and then atomic weights different number of protons neutrons electrons so its configuration is also different so if this is different it means its excited state will also be different 
So it means these excited states, you know, this particular electronic energy states, what are these? Is nothing but if atom is at ground state, what is it energy? If it is the first excited state, what is energy? Second, third, fourth. So if this is your 0, so you go here, this is first excited state, you go up, this is second excited state like that. So now this difference between the ground state to the first or the first to second, second to third will be different for different atoms because all these energy states depend upon the electronic structure of the atoms. But we have made life simpler because these are available from these tables of electronic energy states. Just go to this website, this is the webbook.nist.gov, NIST is you know National Institute of Science and Technology, it is based in US. So if you go here, you type the atom, it will give you all the energy states, but I suppose instead of energy states, they will probably be writing energy levels and corresponding to energy levels, what are the number of degeneracies. So you won't get this information directly, but you will get energy levels and corresponding degeneracy. I will suggest you have a look at this website. So now still we need to know how to write then electronic partition function. For example, we have gone through the website and we know what is the electronic energy states, let us say for an uh, argon atom, something like that. Or uh, I am taking about argon atom, why? Because we are discussing monoatomic gas. Then how do we write then? So we know that Q, the overall Q electronic is equal to, you have the all the electronic states let us say I put this as I subscript e to the power of minus e i by k t. So you have to sum them up, so you have to sum the all the electronic states or which as I told you in the table you will not be having data for electronic states, you will be having data for electronic or energy levels and their degeneracy, so you write the expression in this manner. electronic levels, I write here J just to indicate a difference from I, I represents states, J represents level, energy level. So you have to multiply with the corresponding degeneracies of that particular level and then do a exponential Boltzmann factor of the electronic levels by KT. So this then becomes the overall partition electronic function. So let us expand the second term then. So it means if I want to expand it, I will get the first as 1 into first ground state degeneracy multiplied by the ground state energy level plus omega second x first excited state degeneracy multiply by the exponential term of the total energy of the first excited state then sec plus keep on going like this so it is the second excited state or the third energy level degeneracy multiplied by the exponential term of the third electronic state level so it is this like this you keep on going, okay. So 1, 2, 3 represents energy levels. So first energy levels you can assume as a ground state. So it has been seen that the difference between the first energy state that is the ground state and the first excited state is so huge. It is so huge that this term is very, very high. So instead of writing explicitly in this manner, let us write in terms of differences with respect to ground state level. So when I talk of 1, it means I am talking about the ground state energy level and the ground state degeneracy. Let us write an expression relative to that ground state. So what I will do, I will take this as common, I will take minus E electronic 1 by R k t as common from all the expression. If I do that, I will get this, E to the power of minus k t. So the first term you have only the degeneracy there, second term it will be degeneracy will be there, 
into now I will write in terms of the change in the degeneracy values. So, it will be minus delta by k t change plus omega. So, likewise I am not writing the other terms you can know what it is if I take the. So, it will give you the expressions likewise. So, obviously this delta Two is equal to E of one. So difference between the energy levels of one and two. That is from the ground state. What is the energy level difference? So in most of the cases, the noble atoms or the noble gases, the ground electronic state energy is one. So this omega is equal to one for monoatomic gases. So this is one. Okay, and uh, sometimes the alkali metal atoms in the, the round state degeneracy is two because if you remember, as you go up and up, you will have more and more degeneracies. As you go down in ground state, the number of degeneracy is very less. Okay, so that's what uh, if you remember the probability and the degeneracy how they are related to each other. So that's why it is very less number in the ground state. So a question comes: How do you measure this? How do you measure this difference in the energy levels? Let us see. So, these energy levels you can measure using a UV spectroscopic measurement. So, what you do in a UV is you send one electromagnetic wave or some radiation in a sample. So, what it will do? The electrons will absorb some energy and then again remaining energy will be transmitted. So, you can see how much of energy it has absorbed. So, from there you will come to know what is the frequency of that particular transmitted ray. So, it means atoms in the electronic ground state if it is subjected to UV radiation it is excited to a higher electronic energy level. So, the energy difference between the ground state and the excited electronic state determines the frequency of the wavelength of the absorbed radiation or the re emitted radiation as the atom return to its ground electronic energy level because ground state values is not possible to determine. So, we choose the energy level of the ground electronic state of an atom to be 0 as there is no chemical bond formation takes place in the monoatomic gas. So, in a monoatomic gas the ground state energy level can be taken to be 0. Why? Because there is no bond, it cannot bond with some other atom. If it bonds with the other atom, it the structure of the electronic structure of the atom will change. So, it means please keep in mind that UV what you do is you send up energy onto a sample, some part is absorbed, some part is absorbed and some part is transmitted. So, it is absorbed and transmitted. So, either you can see how much is absorbed because you know the total input energy, you subtract the abstract uh, absorbed energy if you know the transmitted energy. So, you can find out how much is absorbed. So, if it is absorbed that much energy, you can convert to frequency if you divide by Planck's constant. So, there you will get the frequencies or you will get the energy levels. Like that you keep on sending different UV packets of light or UV UV radiation onto a sample and find out this different energy levels and that is what it has been actually collected and presented in the form of data. So, let us write the electronic partial function because now what we have seen is we can take the ground state electronic energy of monoatomic gas to be 0. So, it means the first part the expression E electronic 1 if you remember E electronic that is Q electronic the entire so, I took e to the power of minus e i common, then we had this term, sorry this is to be mentioned, is, sorry let me write it again this term, so e to the power of minus e, we took this as a common outside and then we had the expression e to the power of minus delta of difference in energy by k t into omega. This is for the ground state of 1, this is of the ground state of 2 
like that we wrote the extended expression. Now we are assuming this the ground state energy to be 0. So it means this is 0. So if this is 0 the first exponential term becomes unity. So what you have is simply 1 plus e to the power of minus delta e 2 by kt into the degeneracy of the second strong state like that. Okay. Now, the, it is to be seen, let us suppose I take the example of argon. The energy difference between the ground state which is 0 for example and the first state is close to around 15.76 electron volt. So, this 15.76 electron volt if you convert it, it will become 1521 kilojoule per mole for argon. Okay. So, it means the difference from 0 to 1 first excited state is this much. So, if you substitute this value in this second part, in this second expression e to the power of minus, so this is nothing but your delta. Okay. So, you substitute this expression here, this entire terms then becomes plus, it becomes e to the power of close to minus 450. I am not writing other terms. So, this e to the power of minus is almost equal to 0. So, we can safely say that a good approximation for the electronic partition function is nothing but the ground state degeneracy. It is nothing but the ground state degeneracy. That is what it says that the electronic partition function approximation is nothing but the ground state degeneracy. So, I suppose that is why you see that we have not take the future terms because this term which is in the numerator will become bigger and bigger. So, it will be going this term my e to the power of minus 450 will go higher and higher and higher. So, as you go higher it is reaches almost equal to 0. So, that means we are only left with one term that is the ground state degeneracy. So, this is your electronic partition function. Now, a question is where you get this degeneracies. You can get the degeneracy of the ground state from this uh, website. The Janoff tables is there from NIST. Again, it will tell us the different degeneracies for different atoms. So, you can pick out which atom you want, which is the alkali atom or the other metals or some other non metal. You can find out the degeneracies. So, you will find the ground state degeneracy. You can safely assume a electronic partition function unless obviously explicitly specified that the ground state electronic degeneracy is equal to its partition function. Okay. Now, let us go to the other one that is the nuclear partition function. The nuclear partition function again they are widely spaced. So, it means the difference in energies of nuclear partition function is far more than electronic. So, it means that is again it will be nothing but again an approximation towards the ground state degeneracy. And further this nuclear partition function will not change on chemical reaction. This energy levels also will not change on chemical reaction because these are based on nuclear. So, difference between the first the ground and the first energy state is much larger than kT. So, it means I can safely assume a nuclear partition function as equal to the ground state nuclear degeneracy or the ground state degeneracy. So, this is a safely an assumption which is correct. So, in all our calculation the nuclear partition function will only appear as a multiplicative factor in the total partition function. Okay. It is a constant. It will not affect any measurable thermodynamic property. Hence, sometimes it is also assumed as unity. So, we now come finally to an partition function for n identical non interacting atoms. We have now got the partition function for translational mode, for electronic mode and nuclear mode. Now, what you do? You just do the product of all these three. So, if you write the product, you will get the partition function for the entire atom. So, if you are writing Q, we have been writing Q. Now, let us write because you know what is Q and capital Q. It is just to the product of the number of molecules. So, so it will be Q overall partition function is Q to the power of n by n factorial. Okay. So, what is this q? So, I write q here because I will be writing the product of translational electronic and nuclear. Let us write translational first you know 2 pi m 
kt by h square into 3 by 2 into v. This is the translational mode. Okay. Now write the electronic mode multiplied by so I write down the expressions delta E2 by K2 okay and then obviously the nuclear partition function as I told you this is ground state is enough. So multiply with n keeping n factorial in the denominator if you keep n factorial in the denominator. So you have translational mode, you have electronic mode, you have nuclear mode. So if you do that finally what you get you can also write down in terms of de Broglie's wavelength that is V upon another way of writing it if you know this to the power of n by n factorial. So, this is the expression. Okay. So, Q translational just want to repeat again here it is nothing but your the de Broglie's wavelength whole cubed and where this de Broglie wavelength is equal to h square by 2 pi m k t. Okay. So, now what you can do is now let us see if this give us the same expression because monoatomic gas are ideal in nature. So, if it is ideal in nature, so it should reduce as a ideal gas expression. So, let us assume that it the electronic energy states are only represented by the ground state electronic values degeneracies and the nuclear states are represented as unity. If we assume that and then take a expression you write P is equal to K T because you know this expression T by dou V from stat just we have not derived this expression in the previous lecture. So, K T L n Q. So, it means it should hold true. So, you take this Q, you take this Q and take the derivative with respect to V. If you take the derivative with respect to V, if you see uh, you have to just assume these things that you have to take this as unity ground state nuclear degeneracy to be unity and this omega again to be represented by only the ground state electronic degeneration for electronic energy. If you do that you will see it will only represent and reduce to n k t by v. You can do it I leave it to you as assignment. So, you can see this will reduce to a ideal gas law which is should be the case because monoatomic ideal gas law. So, because this is true because it should lead to the monoatomic gas which is ideal gas so, and u if you do a u expression you already know that is dou L and q by dou t keep v and n cam and take this value of q expression take the natural log and then take the derivative with respect to temperature you see you will reach to this expression it has to be. This is again we know by definition that the internal energy for assembly of monoatomic gas is 3 by 2 n k t n is the number of atoms of the monoatomic. So, it should reduce to these two expressions pressure will reduce to ideal gas law and internal energy will reduce to the energy of a monoatomic gas. Okay. So, before we conclude let me just explain these carefully these relations these are these useful relations. So, these constants you should be very well aware all has been taken from the book of Sandler. So, it is Avogadro's numbers you know it is number of molecules per mole then Boltzmann constant is 1.38 10 to the power of minus 23 joules per Kelvin. I told you what is the relation between Kelvin the joules and erg 
that is 10 to the power of minus 7, so it becomes 10 to the power of minus 16 in arcs per Kelvin. Then mass of an electron, then Planck's constant, joules into second. The speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power of approximately 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. Then the gas constant is nothing but Avogadro's numbers into K, which is equal to this value. Okay, it is in bar meter cube mole per Kelvin. These conversion factors are also very important. You know, one joule is one kg per meter square second square. One electron volt is this much joule, which is equal to this much arg, or which is equal to 23.063 kilocalorie per mole, or 96.49 kilojoules per mole. So, one electron volt is equivalent to 96.46 kilojoule per mole of energy. Now, one atomic mass unit, whenever you say that this hydrogen, let us say we have atomic weight of 1. So, you do not write 1 here, you multiply by this factor, that is atomic mass unit, you multiply this, it becomes the weight is this much actually. Then you have the translation partition function at 2 pi m k t by h square, this is the inverse cube of the Riborglis wavelength. So, it can be converted further if you replace m. M here is the weight of a single atom which is nothing but the molecular mass by Avogadro number of molecules or atom by Avogadro number it will give you the single atom, small m is single atom, capital M is the total molecular weight in grams, T is the temperature, V is the volume. So, you replace this by M, so do some mathematical arrangement. So, you will get a constant factor. So, if you know the molecular weight, put it in here, which should be in grams, this T should be in Kelvin, you get something in centimeter minus cube. And if you want to put in terms the volume, if it is volume is centimeter cube, then you use this relation. If volume is in meter cube, then you use this relation. So, it is an effective way of computing the translational partition function because most of these remain constant. So, I am putting all the constant together into 1.88 10 to the power of 6. So, this needs to be revisited time and again because when you do problems, you will require the help of these constants, how to convert them from the arc to joule, joule to arc and then when we are talking about electrons, how, what are the energy of electrons, all these things will be requiring especially numerical problems. So, I will conclude my lecture here, thank you and as before, you should go through the Sandler's book, you should give a different meaning all these whatever I am teaching you, it is present there and go through the references also of this book. Thank you.